Hello again, everyone. It is your Black Knight with another, I guess you'd call it a system tour sort of video. And we're going to cruise around one of the systems here and freelancer on the 24-7 freelancer universe server. We can let's, let's go back here. Let's go back and, and show you where you can find that. Come on. Oh, don't go all weird on me here. Now we multiplayer, internet. I'm running a mod that will actually show you where the actual servers are now. That's part of the 24-7 Freelancer Universe mod. It will let you actually find the stuff. Because the, the main global server is not connected anymore. Microsoft doesn't support it. But people, people have worked things out. They found ways around that. And we're going to go to the 24-7 Freelancer Universe at this IP address. Somebody is actually playing there. This, and this is early on a Saturday morning, so that's a good time. Let's see, there's not a lot of other things going on here. Let's, let's, let's go here. So, the goal of these videos is not, okay, these are not tutorial videos. They're not intended to uh, show you every single nook and cranny of every single system. There's, you know, the main one of the main things that's fun about Freelancer is, you know, doing exploration. And, you know, that's that's one thing that you might want to do first before you're, you're really looking at any of these is really cruise around and discover things. Coming across a, a shipwreck or a new planet is just one of the best feelings in the world when you're playing this game. But what these videos are supposed to be are storyteller videos. I, I've had so much experience with this game and so many amazing things have gone on that uh, I want to share some memories here. So I could cruise around the system and maybe tell you a couple things about the history of my history in the game. Some things you may hopefully find interesting. So, uh, some memories that you may be sharing with me if you're one of the people who has played this game with me over the last, oh, I don't know, 14 years. Is it 14 years now? 15 really playing the game. Yeah, almost. It'll be 15 probably in, in the fall. I'll be playing this game 15 years online. And so... And the game's only going to be 16 years old. The server's up almost 16 years, so it's a, this is a, a a game that has some legs. It's, it's still got it's got history. It's got a lot going for it. And today we're going to go into the Dublin system. And you can see my ship type is the Blood Dragon. That's not a standard ship type. That has been modded into the game through the 24/7 Freelancer Universe mod. It's upgrade to the game. You don't need the mod to play on the 24-7 Freelancer uh, server. You do go in completely vanilla, but you get a lot more out of it. You know, you'll be able to see my ship. It's just that you won't, because it, it is taken from elements that were in the game that weren't enabled. Uh, you know, when the when the ship, when the whole thing was released. But I mean, there are certain systems you won't be able to get to without the mod, and so it's better to load, load the mod up. But it's not that hard. So here's the Blood Dragon. Now the Blood Dragon is a very heavy fighter, and we can uh, we can take a look at some of this. Let's go to ship repair here. Now you'll see that my starboard wing and port wing are trimmed. That is because, although it is a much more fetching craft with these huge wings that come out from the sides, it's also a much bigger target and it's much more susceptible to missiles. Um, if you have those wings out there because of the way that Freelancer calculates uh, missile damage, it, it applies the damage of the, the full damage of the missile to every element on the ship. So you're, you're a much tougher ship if you take off stuff that doesn't matter. There's no weapons on those wings, they don't affect handling, and uh, you can you get your full hull integrity if you repair the, uh, the ship after you shoot to have somebody shoot them off for you. So this is a, a trimmed blood dragon. And if we look here at the weapons on it, it's got a Lancer and Catapult missiles. It only has, you know, level 8s for uh, its its gun missile, its smaller level, uh, you know, locations. And it's got 8s and 9s. So we don't have any level, we don't, you can't put any class 10 weapons on it. So we can't put any Nomad guns, we can't put any of the named weapons, the Diamondbacks, you know, stuff like that, the Cerberuses. But, what you can do is you can mount a Catapult and a Lancer on it, which are two smaller missiles, a class 7 and a class 5. Launch them together. Usually, a lancer missile will take a ship down its own, but if it if it doesn't, uh, if both missiles hit, that will usually take down a player. And I've mounted on it four Tizona del Cid's. Now that actually is probably three. Yeah, four Tizona del Cid's. That's actually probably overkill. 
Um, you know, because two Tizonas pretty well take a shield down on its own. But the Tizona does a lot of nice things. It, it, it not only takes out your shield energy, it also will, will drain your gun energy. So you can really, you know, if someone's not using, you know, Nomads, it'll, it'll make their other guns turn off so that you can, they can't shoot at you. So it, it's an interesting weapon. I mean, nomad, mo, nah, blah, blah, blah. nomad guns will still work, but everything else gets drained out and they have to wait for things to recharge. So if you can pound somebody with this, you can really get them in a nice position to, to get rid of them with the missiles. It's got a Hornet Cruise Disruptor, so it can take out any missiles that are coming at me, or uh, you know, make sure that someone can't go into cruise. It's got a Ripper Mine on it. Biggest mine in the game, and it's a mine that you can only get by looting, uh, looting a wreck up for somewhere up in uh, Omicron Alpha, I believe, is the uh, the only place you can you can get that. It's been a while. I think that's where it's at. You can see I have a full missile allotment here. It's running a, a barrier, a heavy fighter shield, which is interesting. It's a a molecular based shield. Which is, is good against certain things, you know, if, if you have a, a positron base shield, it's extremely susceptible to the, to the to Zona Del Cid. So it's, it's, you know, it's worth it to get a molecular uh, base shield just so that, you know, someone's blasting to Zonas at you. Now, there are other shield weapons that have been modded into the game that are set up for, you know, to, to especially be effective against molecular base shields. But they're not as popular as it is. So, you know, that's why we've got a barrier here. At some point, what you can do is you can get a Graviton-based one, which you, to get a Graviton-based shield, you have to actually uh, donate to the server. And at some point, may do that and get you know get a Graviton there. But for right, you know, the, the, you know, actually, I, mean, I have a donate to the server. I just haven't asked for one, so it's it's a matter of you know when that becomes important to me. If I ever decide that I really, really, really need a Graviton-based shield, which has a little bit more uh, a little more power to it. But there are, you know, graviton-based weapons that are extremely effective against the graviton-based shield. So, and they're they're kind of popular. You know, the Krakens, you're going to run into Krakens. So, I haven't I haven't made it a priority to swap this out yet. And there's that. Well, we, there we are. I think we're we're full here. No, are, are we not full? We have okay. Here we go. Let's get that full. There you go. That's everything. We are now maxed out. 26 and 63, kind of odd numbers, but that's uh, that's what's balanced for the ship, I gather. So here we are, let's look at the map. We are in Dublin. As you can see, I haven't really explored necessarily everything here. There are some things that we can still find together. The main purpose of this video is to discuss where we are right now, McDonald Base. Let's read the description. McDonald Base, Dublin System. Class Dunsin Dunsinane. Dunsinane. Gravity complete. Docking, yes. Amenities, yes. Population, 10,000. Never, never figured out where they could fit all the people on these things, but I guess it's. They're, they're all snuggled in there. No ships for sale. They're selling light arms. They're buying mocks, so if you can get mocks from someplace and run it in here, it's a good landing place. Consumer goods, engine components. It shows all the equipment they have for sale. There's some interesting mixes of stuff here. That ripper is a different ripper than the ripper mine. It's a different weapon. Now, this description. McDonald Base is a military intelligence installation dedicated to the pursuit of advanced information and weapons technology. Named after war hero and spy master Andrew McDonald. McDonald Base is the headquarters station of those masters of the spycraft, Bertoni Intelligence, BI-6. BI-6 is constantly on the lookout for any information, research, or new developments that can be incorporated into the defensive and offensive capabilities of the Bertonian Armed Forces. A special priority is placed on any information regarding nomad activities. Top credit is paid for information they find useful. And there are apparently some, some, uh, some, some trade items in game where it's, it's you know, critical information. I forget how you even get them. I, mean, you're, I remember back when this came out, that was a thing. I forget how you get the stuff to sell here. But there is a whole, whole you know, aspect of that. If I can f go back and figure out how that works or look it up in the, you know, somewhere on the forums, I'll, we'll have a, a video about that at some point. But more to the point, 
that description, if you're, if you're playing Vanilla Freelancer, you're not going to see uh, that description. You're not going to find this base. It's not, it's not a part of the Vanilla game. As a matter of fact, this base would probably not be in the, uh, the 24 7 Freelancer universe had it not been for a request that I'd made of Robocop, the, uh, the system administrator. You can see that there's, there's some, some interesting missions here, a couple high paying ones. Not, not super high paying, but not bad. Hunt, hunting mollies. Oh, here you have to hunt Corsairs here if you want to. But, you know, the trick about hunting Corsairs there is it's so good to be friendly with the Corsairs. So, so let's get on with the act. We've got all the, the, the prologue down here. Let's take a look outside and get on with the story. So, you heard the whole story about, you know, Andrew McDonald being, you know, this base being named after Andrew McDonald, and it is named after Andrew McDonald, but not, not a spy master of, uh, of Bretonian lore here. Let's take a quick look around. This is really impressive. It's a big base. Quite lovely, really. Looks like it has some kind of manufacturing capabilities. And it has these kind of almost landing pads on it that I really love. Like if you want to hang out. Because you won't you won't get idled out of the game. As long as you're you're outside of a base, but that doesn't mean you can't be hanging around a base. You know, you just land right here. Well, not not likely to land. But you can just kinda of hang out and look around at things. And McDonald base was created because there was a guy named Andrew McDonald. Went by the nickname Max, but in game, went by the name Phlegmatic. Yeah, a few other Matic names. I think he had Automatic and, you know, uh, any kind of pun that you could go with. He was he certainly did love his puns. But uh, Phlegmatic was his name, main name. And Phleggy, as we like to call him, Phleggy and I were at one point the only two members of base back when we were on the get on it server and that was an australian server he was from australia and uh, we were we basically built the clan up together we were we were recruited into the clan everybody who was involved with it quit the game basically and uh, we were, i think we were both uh we were both recruited by whiskey 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 or whiskey sour as he used to call himself and i have no idea what happened to whiskey but he he left. He eventually stopped playing. We essentially took over the took over the clan. I, he wa he wanted he asked if I wanted to be leader. I said no. I, I didn't want to invest that much in, into the game at that time. That was a terribly ironic thing, um, because even with you know when he became leader and he said, well you'll be executive officer, and I was just as involved as he was in doing a lot of different things. And well, as we get through the story, we'll we'll tell the tale. But we built it up. We recruited people. We we came up with a you know initially base didn't really have that much of a story to it. It was only called base because the guy who had founded it, which I didn't, who I didn't meet till really years later because he founded the clan and left, um, was a guy named Base Dude Two Thousand who used to play bass. He was a bass player. So you know the clan didn't really. The only reason he formed the clan was because there were other he had problems with uh, I believe it was the outlaws. And so he made a clan so he could get people to defend him and stuff. It was the story that I'd heard. I think that that was the story on it. So we we started this thing and we came up with this whole you know, this concept and the whole idea behind base. And this is where some of the spy master stuff comes in, I believe, is that you know Flag wanted us to basically be a neutral clan that could be friends with anybody and would basically know what's going on. Every you know we we would have the inside track on anything. You know, in theory, we would uh, we would be the people you'd come to. We'd be that guy in the bar who knows everything, and that was that was our deal. We were supposed to be able to know what everybody was doing, and to a certain extent, that's really kind of how it worked out. We did get to be pretty well friends with everybody, and at times we were at war with pretty much everybody as well, but on good terms for the most part. You know, with ex certain exceptions, uh, it wasn't a hostile kind of thing. It was everybody kind of got along and. It was a, it was it was a very interesting clan to be in, 
our our main thing was that we would uh, we would try and protect people who were from griefers. Like you know, if you're role playing, if you're uh, if you're if you're a cop and then you're fighting with someone who's a pirate, well, you know that's one thing. You're role playing. This is what everybody expects. If you're just a traitor, and you've got someone who's just killing you over and over again and won't let you leave a uh, a base, you know this isn't like you you know. This is just, they're just trying to keep you from making money and keep you from getting chips together. And, you know, some of those guys, it was like, you know, yes, they were role-playing. It was definitely not like the random griefers that you'll see online nowadays. They were they were actually role-playing as pirates and trying to, you know, tax people and do things like that. And some people, really, they didn't have the money to pay the taxes and they couldn't get off the bases. And so what we would do is go and, and basically be cannon fodder for the pirates. We, we got good after a while. We could shoot them down. But the main thing wasn't even to win. The main thing was that if you distracted the pirates, then the uh, the, the the traders could get away. You know, the, the, the lower level. Sometimes you'd have somebody who's just harassing lower level players. We would we would try and intervene with that, and it was a good kind of thing. We came up. I I, I can't remember whether which one of us we hashed out what but what, what base would mean. We had to come up with an acronym. So the thought was base and system services. That's where that came from. Because therefore we would just be, hey, listen, if you've got, if you're in a system, if you've got, a, you know, if there's a, a base like this where you're you're being harassed and there, someone's trapping you in the base, then you could have our services. We would come and help you escape. That was kind of our thing, base and system services, and that's where it all came from. And Fleggy and I hashed that out, and it, it, we turned it into something. We got some really, we we made it a a priority to recruit people, not based on what skill they had in game, which is not how you normally do these things. And we didn't recruit randomly either. What we did was we recruited people who were not jerks. Like if you were, we, we really recruited based on personality. And what we ended up with was a group of people that I'm still friends with today because they're all such great people. I mean, they're really were just fun people to hang out with and game with. And you know, it's unfortunate that most of them are several thousand miles away from me physically, but. You know that's the nature of online gaming anyway but you know i have i have gotten to meet some of the wonderful people from other countries and it's it's really you know they're, they're all cool they're just as cool as they are in, in real life as they are in in game and it was a wonderful wonderful concept and i've never seen anyone uh i've never seen any other clans do that i've never seen any other, now i guess you call them crews now that that's the common thing this back in the day clan was the term that came out of call of duty and uh, that's you know why we have that little base at the front of our name. That was what you did. You put you chain you use the first few letters of your your name to show your team. And so we were, we created base together. We we kind of refounded it on actual principles, and things went you know very well. And for some years we were very competitive with uh, with systems f battles and stuff like that. And you know we didn't always win, but we didn't always lose either. And we we had some very big victories. But there's a reason, you know, that's not enough to have a, a base named after you. It's, it's just not. There's more to the story, and it, it, it does take kind of a turn. Um, you know, Flag had some, you know, everybody has their demons that they, they battle and their, their problems. And uh, I'm not going to go into to Flag's. We used to, we used to spend a lot of time talking about stuff. And I, I really thought that he'd beaten them all. I mean, he'd really done a lot of stuff where he was on the right track with everything and, and things were going well for him and uh and he took some time off from the game where he wasn't playing as much and there, there was a before all that there, there was a point where he'd gotten into a huge a massive row with the admins the admins used to play under the the the, the, uh, the clan tag bob the band of brothers and they were a police clan and we were neutral, and they, they, they claimed one of our systems and got into because because they changed the rules where you could claim systems as long as you're adjacent to yours. And so they essentially, you know, started a war with us. So we fought them for, really, until the server closed. But there was some dispute over something. I don't remember what it was. It I can't remember. Was it something about somebody cheating on something, or there was a perception of that, or is there some something where it seemed like the, the admins were giving, you know, favor to something else, you know, it was like it wasn't a, a fair approach to something in the game, I was something on the forums, I forget I think, it, it, I can't remember what the heck the story was, it was, you know I think it was forum related, because there was some argument on the forums and 
like someone was abusive and then Flag was abusive back I want to say and then they they gave Flag some kind of temporary ban and he was saying that well this is because you're friends with this person and it was it was a whole nightmare and I, and I argued his case for him but for at least a time he was he was locked out of the of the servers he of the you know the, locked out of the forums he could play the game but he couldn't he couldn't post which to be a, a leader of a clan you have to be able to post otherwise you can't organize battles so Therefore, we, we swapped roles. I became leader of base, and he became executive officer, and I was able to make the arrangements. So, that's where all that began. I've been leader of base since, let's see, what year was that? 06? 2006? Something along those lines. 06 or 07, somewhere in there. And that began to where it kind of soured his, his feeling with the game to a certain extent. He was, he was active for a while, and, you know, we were still friends. But after a while, he stopped. He kind of stopped playing regularly. So things progressed. We had, you know, we got people. We, things were going well. And at, at one point, at one point, we we took New York. That was New York is the central system of the game. We can, we can pull this up here. If we look at the map, let's see, pull the main map. This is the New York system. You can see it's dead center, in the middle of everything, and. To take that, I believe we had to own. We, we were working. We were working out of Bering. Bering was our old home system. We're going to do a whole video on Bering. And we had to work our way. We had to own, we had to take Texas back. Texas was the system we'd owned originally. We originally we owned Texas. Um, Texas. Uh, the, these, we had these three systems: Texas, Bering, and Hudson. Those were because originally you have three systems. And uh, was it Hudson? Or did we have a third one? Because they didn't have to be connected once upon a time. Boy, it's been so long. But the main, our main systems, the ones that we were really attached to, you know, you know what it might have even been this, this, and, and Hamburg, one of those kind of things. But we we worked our way. We, could, we we had a bunch of systems here, and we took New York. We've taken New York a couple times. We took them as the allies of Draco, but this time we took it as base. It, New York became a base system, and that was huge. That was like a big thing in game. It was really incredible. And I messaged him through our, our forums, because we, we have our own forums, still have it up. And I told him, matter of fact, I can probably look up what this date is, and it's not, but it's, it's not pertinent. And I, you know, I told him that we'd won. And the reply that I got back just absolutely crushed me. Is I got a message back that said, this is, this is Max's father. Max has committed suicide. Please don't message anymore. Now, I'm not going to go into the devastation, the absolute devastation that that caused on the server, although I really should, because you know what? Here we are, we're a whole bunch of people uh, who never met this man. And we've only ever, you know, talked on TeamSpeak or, or typed at each other. And it was absolutely, I mean, you know, I'm not one who weeps openly very easily. I, I couldn't, I was out of, I was just completely devastated. Uh, it was just one of the most devastating things that, you know, you could, that you could, it was just unbelievable. I, I was surprised. This, this isn't, it wasn't a, like a quote unquote personal friend. You didn't know this person. It was an internet person, but it was a real person. And it was somebody I had talked with for years. I mean, we'd spent lots of time and things were, had been going so well for him. But, I mean, everybody, there was, it was, I mean, everybody on the server was crushed. Base, everybody was just devastated. And it was, if you, if you're thinking about this, you have no idea. I mean, if, if we're just video game people, and we're crushed, and we're devastated, what's happening to his, what's happening to his niece? What's happening to his parents? What's happening to, you know, you, if, if you're even thinking about this, don't. There is, there is no reason to go for a permanent solution to a temporary problem, and all problems are temporary. No matter what they are, you can work around them, you can find a solution, talk to somebody, don't do this. Now, that having been said, um, there, was one, uh, there was one player in game who was from the same area that he was. And I don't remember if he knew him in real life. But he, he may have. He, but he at least knew well enough he was from the same town or something around there. And he said, look, you know, I'm not sure he's killed himself. I, I can't find anything about it, him being dead. Can't find an obit or anything like that. But his house just I, was in the paper. And it was sold for like something like $700,000. And he had a pretty big house. It was, you know, as I recall, I actually was able to find it on, uh, 
on, a, on Google Maps, which was the weirdest thing because I'd seen pictures of it because he had pictures on his photo bucket, if anybody remembers photo bucket. Just a picture of the front. I'm like, I remember one night I was just really depressed about the whole thing. I'm like, I wonder if I could find his house. And the weird thing is, is it took me all five minutes. I, I know it was when I, when I went to when I went to where I thought it was in Street View. It was, matched the picture of his house exactly, uh, except for the fact that there was a for sale a sold sign on the front of the, on the front yard. So that was that was freaky. So he wasn't there anymore, of course, but he he's gone. But how was he gone? Was this an internet suicide? Which, man, if you wanted to stop playing the game, if you want to stop talking with everybody, just say, "Look, I'm done here. Don't talk to me anymore. You know, don't don't do this." This was this was just terrible. Um, that having been said, if you know, like, if you're alive, all right, and and that's the basis that I work on anymore. Is uh, I'm just gonna imagine forever that this was an internet suicide and not a real suicide. That you just decided that you had to get away from the game for whatever reason um, and I can understand why some some reasons why you might have had to get away from the game I, I can understand all that but all is forgiven and you know you ever want to come back you know it's you know if you ever want to talk again you know I'm here but now we're getting around back to the base because what happened was I, I told you know I told Robo I said look you know there's this guy and he's I think he was looking for ideas for bases I don't remember how it came up but I, you know maybe I just came out of the blue I said, there's this guy who um, I used to play with, and, you know, as far as I know, he's dead. I mean, he's just, you know, he's gone. And if he's not dead, he's dead to me because he's cut himself off from me as much as he possibly can for whatever reason. I always worried because I, I, I you know, there was a new guy who's a little bit, he was artistically in, inclined and he wanted to do stuff for the clan. And I was trying to encourage him along with stuff. And I, I remember I changed... I changed the logo for you know our logo from on the uh, on the clan page from one that Flag had made to one that he'd made, and I, ne I never really I never really talked to him again. I always wondered did he get mad at me because I changed the logo? I mean I was just you know I sent him a whole letter explaining what I was trying to do there, and I often wondered did he just get you know, mad at me and and you know hopefully he could forgive me for that. I mean, it's, we don't use it anymore. We still use. The one that, that he, you know, the, the guy kind of soured on us, as I recall. I, I think he stopped playing with us, or there was something where he didn't work out, and we changed it back. But, I don't know. I, I'll never, it's one of those things where you, you, you try to figure out what the hell happened, what was the trigger. And, uh, so anyway, I talked to, to RoboCop, I said, look, can you, can you put something, it doesn't have to be much, but you did something up there and name it after this guy. And... Robo, well, he did, and he came up with this whole thing, and he—it's—it's it's really, you know, kind of a, a wonderful, a wonderful base here. You know, it's, it's really beautiful, and it's something that you know I have, you know, you know, for as long as the system is available, and for as long as I have these videos, it's something that I have to remember by, you know, because it's just, it's truly a depressing story for the most part. But I mean, it's, it's, this is at the core of the history of base. It's one of the things that, you know, we all know about. And we all know about Fleggy. Andrew Max McDonald. Suppose that's enough for one video. We'll, we'll take another tour launching from McDonald Base. Maybe we'll cruise around double another time. Because right now, ugh, I'll be honest, I'm a little maudlin, folks. On that note, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night. <laughs>